All right, Eddie Hearn, thank you so much for joining us today on Fight Hype. I mean, obviously a lot going on, Eddie, but let's start with your fight coming up Saturday with Carlos Cuadras against uh, Bam Rodriguez. Obviously, Bam comes in as a replacement fighter, and sometimes that can be a dicey proposition, but this kid, you know, the hardcores know. Mm. He's the real deal. Yeah. And what do you, what's your thoughts on this fight and the quality of it? Well, I think when you talk about the hardcores and the boxing community, they're very knowledgeable people. And the reason we signed Jesse Bam Rodriguez is because so many of them said so many great things about them and they're not wrong that community do you know what i mean they yeah. know their boxing mikey garcia robert garcia have said to me for the last two or three years we believe this kid is a pound for pound great so we've been looking for a big fight for him for a while and he was due to fight on the card um and then this opportunity came up and we needed to save the show so you know without my jesse rodriguez hat on just with a promoter's hat on, i'm thinking that is a great fight. But then when you think about the opportunity for Jesse Rodriguez, you know, the, if this fight was at 108, I would say Jesse Rodriguez was a big favorite in the fight. But moving up to super flyweight, two divisions, it doesn't make, you know, he says I can fight up there. I'm, he's a 108, yeah. do you know what I mean? If you can make 108 to move up to 115, it's a lot of weight. And Quadras is long in the tooth, you know, a little bit, to the back end of his career, but no we doubt. saw it last time against Estrada. He had him over, he had him in all sorts of trouble. Huge puncher, big heart. This is going to be a tremendous fight. And I, I really feel that victory for Jesse Rodriguez can put him right up there. You know, it's difficult. He really needs to be operating at flyweight or super flyweight because I know we talk about still the glamour of 108, but it's still 108. Yeah. You know, to the casual audience, light flyweight, right. you know, it's hard enough flyweight or super flyweight. But think of the fights, Jesse Rodriguez against Rungvisar, Jesse Rodriguez against Estrada, Jesse Rodriguez against Julio Cesar Martinez, against Chocolatito. Unbelievable. So these are tremendous fights, so we'll see how he gets on on Saturday. I remember when you first came over to the US and I said, like, what are your plans? What are you gonna do? And you said, I'm gonna invest in Mexicans and, and you've done that. Mm. And putting them in the, in the Southwest, I think is a, is a smart decision. Mm. I mean, you've got Phoenix now, yeah. you're gonna be in San Diego with Chocolatito. That's done really well, yeah. I mean, this is, this has been tough because you know first it was Jesse Vargas against Liam Smith yeah. then it was Quadras against Rungvisai then it was Jesse Rodriguez against Quadra I bet the local people are thinking what's going on you know but I remember being here in 2019 for the Danny Jacobs Chavez fight I yeah. mean Chavez quit that night and I was in the ring getting about 400 <laughs> pints of lager flown, thrown over me but it was you know you could feel it was a knowledgeable boxing crowd with a lot of passion and energy so we expect to have sort of three, three and a half thousand in there on Saturday. Not going to be a huge crowd, but I think it'll be a good card. And this is an important city for us. San Diego's doing really well. Good. You know, we expect to have 8,000 or 9,000 in there for Chocolatito against Julio Cesar Martinez, yeah. which again is a replacement opponent, but a better fight. Like, so it's hard to say it's a better fight, but, but a more intriguing fight. You know, Estrada against uh, Chocolatito, always a classic, but this is just yeah. an edgy fight, you know? and. Uh, bit like Rodriguez against um, Quadras on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. It's an unbelievable round robin that's going on in this division. Can't wait to see all the fights. But let's talk about some of the other stuff going on. Obviously, right now, Canelo Alvarez is up there golfing in Pebble Beach. Yeah. What is going on with him? I mean, um, you're you're trying to get him to fight the likes of, you got B-Ball, maybe, you know, revisit the Triple G. We talked about that last time we spoke. What, what do you think ends up happening for Canelo uh, Alvarez in May? Um, I think that from my point of view, some of the greatest moments of my career and maybe, I don't want to sound too much like a fanboy, but maybe life has been spent promoting Canelo Alvarez. You know, yeah. the, the Callum Smith fight, the Billy Joe Saunders fight, the spectacle. It's like for someone that loves boxing, being involved in those nights, not just because Canelo is a pound for pound great, but it's like the energy of the Mexican fans and like it's, it's such an amazing thing to be a part of. We're working really hard to try and be part of his future. And I have a great relationship with Canelo and with Eddie Reynoso. We're friends, but it doesn't mean he's just gonna take a fight with us because we get on well. Yeah. You know, he's very selective about his career, what he does. For, for Canelo, it's all about the challenge. He's got all the money in the world. He's got all the belts in the world. He's got, so at that stage in your career, what are you looking for? So it's not about money, it's about challenges. And if you look at what Canelo's done against the champions, you know, it's, it's bizarre that people will even question his resume. You know, I had this argument with someone 
recently and I said, can you just, let's just rewind the run from Danny Jacobs, right, who was the world middleweight champion. That was a unification fight. Danny, I mean, even going back to two Gennady Golovkin fights, you know, Danny Jacobs moves up two divisions to fight Sergei Kovalev, knocks him out. Then he wants to be undisputed at 168. Beats Callum Smith, the number one in the division, ring magazine champion. Has to have a run out against Yildirim as the mandatory, nothing he could do. Fights another champion in Billy Joe Saunders. Then fights another champion in Caleb Plant, right? To become undisputed. Now he's looking at Charlo, who's a world middleweight champion. Bivol, who's a light heavyweight, undefeated world champion. Gennady Golovkin, like this, this guy, it, it is incredible. The, the consecutive fights that he's having against champions. Yeah. So, my side, everybody proposes fights that they can deliver. The two that I can deliver with the zone are Bivol and Triple G, straight off the bat. I love the idea of Canelo trying to beat the light heavyweights. You know, yeah. Joe Smith, better be a Bivol. I mean, if he could become undisputed at 175 as well, that would be incredible. For me, Two of the best fights I've ever seen have been the Triple G fights. So the trilogy for the undisputed 168 is another huge fight. So, but it it really comes down to Canelo and Eddie. Yeah. They just look at the options and go, we like that challenge, you know, and we pray that that challenge is with us. Could Gennady take place in May with them? Up no, again? I think I think you know he's contracted to fight Morata. Okay. And, now, don't forget, Gennady hasn't boxed now for over a year. Yeah. Not his fault because of the pandemic in Japan, but he's going to want to get that fight in before he jumps back into Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion. So the route would likely be Bivol and, and Triple G. But, and now uh, you've already made that presentation to Eddie and we, Canelo? We've talked in depth about that, yeah. And, and, you know, and what, 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 what's their response? I mean, you can usually tell how someone's acting, body... I think they body. like it. You know, they think they're two great fights. You know, I mean, he knows everybody in the world wants to see the Triple G trilogy, uh -huh. you know, because they're just great fights. And he likes the challenge of moving up and facing another champion. But I'm sure he likes the Charlo fight. I'm sure he likes, you know, other fights out there for him against champions. The, the cruiserweight guy. Yeah, I think that's another fight. Maybe that's for later in the year, I don't know. Okay. But, um, you know, I think he just wants to fight the best and he wants to challenge himself. And the Bivol fight is a very tough fight. You know, I, I know, the perception of Canelo is he's unbeatable, and he, he might be, but Bivol is a, is a tall, rangy, very solid technical fighter who can punch, he has great footwork, he's unbeaten, he's, he's young and fresh. Yeah. You know, Sergei Kovalev, if you're going to dispute Canelo's resume, you could look at Sergei Kovalev and say, oh, yeah, but he was at the back end of his career. Bivol's in his absolute prime. He beat Joe Smith easily. You know, and he's been searching for this big opportunity. He's a that's a very dangerous fighter. So, Great point. You know, I, th I think that he's one of the few people who never look for an easy yeah. way out because it doesn't motivate him. Right. You know, like the easy payday. It does. Like he wants a challenge. So he, he's quite unique. Him and Eddie, in the sense of who's almost like what's the toughest fight. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's what we want. And like better be it. That's a really you know. And I've spoken to him about that fight. He loves that fight. Does he? Yeah. And that is. I mean, that is a brutal, brutal fight. Well, this is a path to get there because he would have the belt, yeah. and then those two guys are going to unify. He can fight anyone he wants at any time. Yeah. He doesn't that's need true. a part. That's true. But at the <laughs> same time, you know, it's nice to have a plan. When we sat down with him, talking about becoming undisputed at 168, we said. Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant. It, and it, it happened in a year, Lance. Do you know what I mean? That's incredible. the most incredible yeah. thing. Like, yeah. that to do that within a year, to beat all the champions in a division within a year. People talk about the inactivity of great fighters. He's a guy who's gone the other way. He's become more active during the pandemic. Separate yourself from your agenda here. Mm. Does the Charlo, Charlo fight really move the needle? As much as what you just laid out with Bivol no, for Canelo. I, mean, no, I think the Bivol fight and the Charlo fight are both, you know, they're, they're like oh, yeah. for like, okay. I think, you know, but I think the, the Triple G fight is, you know, that's oh, the that's biggest huge. fight out yeah. there. So, um, and he he wants the biggest fights out okay. there, you know. Right. And I think, yeah, Bivol and Charlo too, I think Charlo, I personally feel like Charlo is an easier fight uh, because of the size. But at the same time, Charlo's a good fighter as well, you know.